you sick of dying to sweats every single time you try to play Fortnite? Well, in today's video, I'll show you how to become a pro in zero build mode. First, I'll start off with some tips to help you improve at the game, and then I'll be going over one of my zero build games to show you exactly inside my mind of how I played through that game. Before we jump into the tips on how to improve in zero build, I'd really appreciate it if you guys could hit that subscribe button because less than 4% of you guys watching this video right now are subscribed. With that being said, let's jump straight into the first tip on how you can become a pro in zero build mode. Since you can't build, engagements and fights can be a lot more difficult. You want to be very selective about when you engage fights and prioritize fights where you have the advantage. Because you can't build, you need to make sure that you've got the best position to fight your opponent. This might mean to make sure you have consistent high ground over your opponent or carrying useful items such as bonkers, shield bubbles or shockwaves. This leads us on to tip 2. You want to make sure you have the right loadout for your game. This will probably consist of a spray weapon, like a warforged AR or a burst SMG. Then you'll want to be carrying a shotgun, which I'd recommend either the frenzy auto or the gatekeeper shotgun. And then you want to carry a utility item, such as shockwaves or something to protect yourself against your opponent, like a bunker or a shield bubble. Then you'll want to carry a sniper and a healable of some sort. This would be an ideal loadout for a zero build game. Without the ability to build, natural cover becomes crucial to help you win every single fight in the game. If you don't have items to protect yourself or get yourself out of fights, you'll want to try your best to use natural cover like trees, rocks, and especially the big bushes across the map to shield yourself from enemies. Moving unpredictably makes it so much harder for your enemies to hit you. Strafing, jumping, crouching, and sliding consistently is a great way to trick your opponents to help make sure they don't hit you as much. Take advantage of unique and stealthy ways to fight your opponents and catch them off guard. Using bushes and other natural cover to help hide and ambush suspecting opponents is a great way to outplay them. You can also try using items to your advantage, such as the chicken and dash strategy, where you slide and dash at the same time while holding a chicken off something that's ramped like this to get a massive boost. Zero build mode can be very intense at times, not being able to protect yourself with builds, but it's essential to stay calm and focused so that you don't get eliminated. So keep cool even if you're in scary situations. You can work on this by even practicing in zero build practice maps to simulate real fight situations, which can be a great way to help you practice these stressful moments. All of you would be aware of your overshield, but not everyone utilizes it. A lot of time you'll get shot a bit, but it will only crack your overshield which can regenerate really quickly. So if you're in a fight and get hit a bit, don't stress that you're on low health. Try and get to some cover and let your overshield regenerate so you can go back into the fight more confidently. I wanted to start the game where I could advantage myself over every other player in the lobby, so I decided to land Grimgate where I could guarantee that I could get good loot. This is also really risky because I could see lots of people were landing with me. I wanted to land on the top chest which was contested by another player, but luckily he somehow didn't get to pick up the weapon and I was able to pick it up before him. I got some good damage off players near me and then I was actually able to eliminate a duo who landed very close to me. After this, I healed my teammate and I up, so we were ready for the next fight. This is really important to do instantly after eliminating a team, is to heal up so you're ready for the next fight. My teammate and I were very well aware that there were still a few teams here, so we had to be very careful, and it was a mix of an AI team and a real team. But one thing that you want to think about during your fights is being aware that a real team could ambush you while you're fighting AIs, so although AIs are really easy to eliminate, be very careful and cautious in case some real players are lurking around. We were quickly able to eliminate the AI and real real team, and after this we decided it was finally time to grab the boss so we could get the OP medallion and the OP shotgun. But we made sure to go onto high ground as soon as we started fighting the boss in case of a team pushing us. Once we grabbed the grim gate medallion, we decided we still wanted to get the best loot in the game so we could win, so we decided to head over to the underworld, but as we were going over there, there was a team of real players right ahead. As you can see, I was using what was around me to protect me from the opponent that I was versing, while also taking advantage of the dashes that I had from the medallion. I did take a fair bit of damage from this team, but because of how my teammate and I were playing it, we were pretty easily able to eliminate this duo. And after we eliminated this team, it was time we healed up, but then we also decided not to go to the underworld because it was pretty much out of zone and there was no point if we wanted to get some more eliminations. As we were slowly rotating in zone, we noticed a team up ahead, and as we got closer, we realized they were AIs. We still decided to take this fight very cautiously, just in case there were real players around us. 
Now this next part is exactly why you want to be cautious the entire time when you're playing. As soon as we finished fighting these AIs, we decided to jump back into a car, and as we were rotating around the zone, another team started shooting at us. A very smart play that we did was rotate a little bit further behind this hill that was right next to us to get a little bit more high ground on the players. As we started to shoot at them, one of their teammates actually decided to shockwave away, leaving his duo in the open right for us. So we were easily able to pick him up. And because we eliminated his teammate, we decided to push over to his duo, which ran away. But as you can see right here, I was going towards where I heard the shots, thinking it was the guy that we were just fighting, but it ended up just being an AI. And as I was doing this, the original duo came back for his teammate's reboot card and ended up almost killing my teammate. But fortunately, because of the loot in my inventory, alongside the Grimgate medallion, I was quickly able to get back to my teammate and eliminate him before he eliminated my teammate. Right after eliminating that team, my teammate decided to drop me the water bending mythic. And might I tell you, this might be the best weapon to use in zero build mode. Because it doesn't take ammo and it literally has aimbot. So please, if you do find one on the ground, actually replace this for either your AR or SMG because I can guarantee you, you'll easily be able to eliminate opponents with it. It's not amazing for close range, but for mid to far range fights, it is so useful. So if you do see it, please pick it up. I'll show you gameplay later on in this game of me using it and to show you how overpowered it actually is. You can also carry weapons like the Chain of Hades, which is super OP to do plays just like this, which oh I didn't God. use in in this game, but there's so many uses of the items in this season. Back to the zero build game, we noticed a medallion team super far in zone, so we knew the best play would be to hold them in zone. Once we got over to them, we noticed that they were looting up the vault, so we applied pressure on them almost instantly while using the water bending mythic which I talked about before. They were able to escape in a car, but it's okay because we had the items to quickly chase them down. We still applied constant pressure, breaking their car and dealing a bit of damage to both of them. We decided to push over as they were rotating away. For some reason, the teammate decided to split when we started spraying at them, leaving one of the duos by himself, so we beamed him a heap and then we were able to quickly eliminate him. We started chasing the other teammate towards zone and as we were just about to kill him, another team eliminated him instead. So we decided to use what was around us to protect ourselves and go to zone. We realized this team that just got eliminated by us and the other team wasn't actually a medallion team and the team that was on us wasn't the medallion team either. So somehow the medallion team had escaped somewhere during when we were fighting. We used what was around us and laid some shots on the team that was ahead of us in zone, scaring them off a little bit, allowing us to push into the zone and end up eliminating the team. As we were rotating towards the new zone, we noticed the new medallion team up ahead of us in zone. So for some reason, we decided to take some shots at it, which I don't actually recommend doing this if you've got the worst position in zone compared to them, but we were still able to scare them off a little bit and they drove away in a car. As we began to rotate to the new zone, trying to get the best position in the zone because we saw a massive hill up ahead, another team came across us in a car, but I was super lucky to hit an insane headshot sniper of him out of the car, and then his teammate decided to dip, so this was an easy extra elimination for us, so my teammate and I both pushed over and I was quickly able to headshot snipe him as he was trying to escape. We decided to maintain our high ground on top of this hill and we noticed a team placed a bunker on top of a vault so we decided to apply some pressure to them and once we started to scare them they decided to come out of the vault and one of their teammates actually dipped so we took this perfect opportunity to push one of the solos and my teammate was able to eliminate him and for some reason the guy that survived decided to come back for his teammates reboot card even though it's a duo versus solo and we were quickly able to eliminate the medallion team but as we were looting up the medallion team's loot some random solo decided to push onto us so we quickly took care of this solo knowing we had items to chase him down if he tried to to escape us. It was now the final 2v2 and we found out it was actually two solos versus us. So we quickly went onto high ground so we could try and locate where these last two players were so we could eliminate them. My teammate and I spotted one of them over in the distance and we noticed that he had an NPC so it was most likely a real player. We went over and I was being cautious by shocking away when I noticed that he had an NPC but I noticed it was actually just an AI who eliminated stormtroopers which automatically hires the Chewbacca NPC for him. So that guy was pretty easy to take out but I was still being very aware that the other player could be around me, so I went straight back onto high ground to try and find him. After searching around a little bit on high ground, we noticed he was all the way over in Pleasant Piazza. We started to take some shots at him, and based on his movement, we noticed he was an actual real player. So we decided to take this opportunity while he was still so far away from us, to go straight onto high ground in the best spot in zone, so we could almost guarantee that we would win this game. Once we rotated onto high ground in zone, we noticed he started pushing over, so we went closer to him and started taking some warning shots to scare him off a little 
little bit. And I noticed he started looting up from the loot piles that we eliminated earlier on in the game. So this was the best opportunity to lay some shots on him. And I hit a snipe and a few shotgun shots. And after that, he decided to start rotating away with all of his shockwaves in his inventory. But fortunately, because of the Grimgate medallion, I was able to quickly chase him down and eliminate him, allowing us to win the game. And that's pretty much inside the mind of a zero build player and some tips on how you can win every single game you play in zero build. It's really not that difficult if you've got a good loadout and you play the game smart. I wish you the best luck on your next zero build game.